Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel where in today's video I shall be taking a look at the VFW. This of course is the early ground vehicle prize in the current Battlefield Engineer event. Just going to do a quick rundown of a few things and then we're going to jump straight into some gameplay. So first off, German vehicle if the big flat gun didn't make it obvious enough. This is in fact a German vehicle on the German tech tree. Premium status, this is a premium vehicle which of course gives you extra silver lion gain and extra research points gain in game. Tier 3 uh, for the current uh, tier of the vehicle and a BR of 5.7. Of course, as with every vehicle, BR could possibly be subject to change at some point in the future. And the main gun, this is of course a Flak 88. This is the Flak 41 cannon, which actually shares a few of its rounds with the KWK 43 cannon found on the Tiger 2. More specifically, the APC BC round and the APCR rounds are identical with the ones on the Tiger 2. And you also have access to a third round, the SPRGR Flak 41 HE round, which of course all these rounds I will throw the stat cards up on screen. Now I will now just throw the actual stat card for the vehicle up on screen, feel free to pause the video, look at any info you want to know, and once you're done doing that, unpause the video and we'll get right into some gameplay. Okay, so here we are in Tank RB. Now, it is worth noting for this, uh, for all of the gameplay in this video, I will be using the APC BC round, the PZ GR3943 stat card now on screen. This round is actually in common with the Tiger 2's round, so this can be used on that tank as well. It is a very powerful round and is very fun to use, especially at the lower rating that this is at compared to the Tiger 2. Now, there's a TV, obviously a Russian Panther, went into the turret, sort of at quite a high angle, but it went in, knocked out the entire turret crew, blew up his ammunition, giving me my first kill in this game. Now, one thing to note is that the gun actually fires a little bit above where you're aiming. I'm not sure if this is a bug or if it is due to the positioning of the optics in comparison with the gun. I don't know if this is either of them, but... You know, it's something that's in the game at the moment. It's something you got to deal with. And surprisingly enough, it isn't actually that difficult to get used to. Um, this was actually my second game in the vehicle, so I'm a bit iffy, as you see there. I did uh, ricochet off the front of that T-34, although the second shot did fix that mistake by blowing him to Kingdom Come and giving me my second kill of the game. Now, after that, I did somewhat end up spawn camping, something of which I wasn't the most happy with, and I'm sure that opinion will be heavily mirrored in the comments. So, though this game does go to show fairly effectively how you should play this vehicle, this being longer ranges. Why? Well, it's a big vehicle and it has pretty much no armor. The crew is very exposed, especially the crew on the gun mounting. So, you know, you want to try and stay at distance because if you go close, you're going to have a ton of enemy tanks coming at you, firing their machine guns, knocking out your gunner, knocking out your driver, and you're just going to get massacred. So stay at longer ranges, snipe with this vehicle. That's what I did in this game and it went fairly well. Um, also, try and stay under cover, as I am now in a forest. Uh, why should you do this? Well, close air support. Um, especially at this rating, things like P-47s are a massive issue. Uh, they obviously come in with their 50 cows, their rockets, their bombs. If they see you, they will kill you. They can shoot you to death, they can bomb you to death, and they can fire their rockets and blow you up to death. You will be dead. So, stay covered, get under trees, get tightly in between buildings, anywhere where the P-47s are unlikely to see you and you should be okay. Uh, generally just close air support as a whole, obviously being an open top vehicle, is a massive threat. So keep distance, stay covered, and generally you should be okay. Of course it is a tiny bit tricky uh, at the start to get used to sniping with this vehicle, considering how the shell does fire a bit above where you're aiming, but you certainly do get used to it after a few games. The reload as well, one thing to note here, um, stock reloads about 6.5 seconds I believe, Currently on my crew, which is not even an ace crew, I've got it down to 4.25. Um, that's pretty good. Um, very quick reload there, I will say. Generally, it's pretty good. Uh, you can get it down to 4, I believe, just to 4 seconds on the dot with a fully maxed out crew. Which certainly isn't too bad, if I do say so myself. Um, a Flak 88 with a 4.25 second reload for me right now. Incredibly useful. I would certainly advise grinding your crew out, getting some crew points, and you will do very well with this vehicle. And as you see there, eight kills, no deaths. Now this situation perfectly demonstrates that really short reload time and how it is useful. Two enemy tanks, the first one being a T-34, who I very quickly killed to a shot uh, to the side. Next one, an IS-1, get reloaded, fire, and kaboom, he is also dead, giving me two kills there. I was very close to being killed. Luckily, 
No crew members of mine were actually taken out. It was just some damage to the vehicle, actually to the uh, traversing mechanism. But other than that, I am okay, and that was two kills. Once I repaired it, I moved on to the base. There's another T-34, so I get aimed up, hit the lower bit of the turret, and that goes in and kills the crew. Unfortunately, another T-34 then hits my ammo rack, and I go bye-bye. So that was a death in that game. So this next game starts off with me killing a KV-220, one of the masters of Russian bias. The first shot is deflected by the Starlinium armor, but my second shot, luckily enough, hits just the right point on the turret wing, goes in and knocks out majority of the crew, giving me my first kill on the KV-220. And actually, you will notice a lot of those overpowered event vehicles being played at the moment, stuff like the TV, the KV-220, also a lot of people playing close air support, purely because using those vehicles they can get more points in game and they will get more of these event toolboxes to grind the event faster and as you saw a few more kills there one on an m36 and one on a t34 so you know i'm sitting here waiting i am not actually spawn camping i'm near the enemy spawn but i'm not at the spawn so i wouldn't call this spawn camping there was a tv of course knocked out some turret crew members then i got a kill on an m41 walker bulldog hit the turret his ammunition went up, and just before I kill the TV, he gets blown up. Now, remember that M41 for the next kill. His squad mate comes along. Um, I'm sort of reversing back because I saw something moving behind the building, so I'm getting back just to try and get some cover. And this guy comes around the corner. He thinks he has the jump on me, but it's just really one of those times where you, they come around the corner and you just really have to say, yeah, nope. He comes around and bang. Straight through the turret ring, uh, ammunition went up. And that was him dead. And those two people, the two M41s in a row, were actually in the same squad. So I presume one of them was like, yeah, go kill him. Go kill him. He killed me. And then I got another one. And here's an M19. And boom. There we go. Generally, the APCBC round, it will pen pretty much everything you face. Um, only exceptions being stuff like T29s. Uh, they can be issues. But in down tiers or at tier games especially, it will pen basically everything. It will just fragment and explode and just murder everything in the vehicle. Most of the time, it is a one-shot shell. You will kill most things. And there's a T25. Um, I think that's one of the earlier stabilized tanks. I think it's, it's a development of the T20, I believe. I'm not entirely sure, though. I've not played it that much. I will have to give it a go, though. And here I do die, as you can see. Machine guns. Machine guns do pen. Um, very little effective thickness on that gun cover. So, generally, I died there. But now that we've looked at it with the side skirts down, let's go look at it with the side skirts folded up. So with them up, it becomes a full self-propelled gun. You do not have 360 degrees of rotation like a turret. You instead have to now turn the entire vehicle if you want to aim. Of course, you do have somewhat rotation. You have a small amount of rotation either side for the gun, but you do need to turn the entire vehicle if you actually want to aim any significant amount. So that can be tricky, especially in urban environments, as you were going to see a few times during these short clips. Now, the first kill, not too difficult. I'm in a fair amount of cover, and there's an M6, so I get the gun aimed, fire off a yeet shot, and I'm able to knock out his engine just before he darts to cover. So I just reverse back to get a better shot, get aimed, fire, and there we go. And as you see, again, that APCBC round doing its work. Very high angle impact there, but it went in and it knocked out the target. Now, there's an enemy tank over there trying to turn, urban environment, lots of things around to stop me, but I do get turned onto target and I am able to take him out. And it was a Comet 1 uh, British uh, medium tank there, so I took him out, that went well. But then, sort of the urban environment betrays me again, and I get killed this time. So I'm moving along, going along, and I see a Sherman come around the corner. So I try and turn, first off I hit this fence, uh, and also my gun's now disabled by his NG, and then I hit a lamppost, and by the time, and now my driver's out so I can't turn, and then he kills me. So the problem with it being sort of a self-propelled gun, if they knock out your driver or your tracks or your engine or your transmission, you can't aim at them, they're just going to murder you, which is a big issue. Now this game, it went a bit better, I didn't die for one thing, so that's useful. I was going along, expecting to see some sneaky breaky M18s at sea, but then one of them's already flanked behind sea. Um... M18s are everywhere, they're bloody annoying, but this time I get I get the jump on him, no scope, and yeah, hull break, he is dead. Bye bye M18, that is the end of this game for you. And funnily enough, I do see another M18, but not before I see a PT-76, yeah, the Russian amphibious tank. He's uh, 
dropped down some smoke, captured the C point, and now he's moving away to go help his allies. But yeah, I'm not letting that happen. And again, hull break. Generally, the Flak 88, if a vehicle has hull break, it will generally hull break it. It is very, it's a very powerful gun, fairly large caliber, so you will generally do quite well. Now, there's an M18 hiding out here. Um, I use the binoculars to get a good aim because obviously there's bushes so my optics can't see him. So I use the binoculars, get a good aim. Uh, again, I can't really see him so I use the uh, the binoculars again. Get that aim on, slightly adjust when I get into the actual gun aim. And there we go, hit the top of the turret, blows in, knocks out the crew, giving me my third kill of that game. And that was it. Uh, that's all the footage I have with the side skirts up. Generally, I did way better with the side skirts down. So, of course, that is personally what I would advise you do. Although, if you feel that having the skirts up is a better playstyle for you, then certainly don't let me stop you doing that. So, now let's go take a look at a few things that are major weaknesses for this vehicle. Of course, excluding machine guns. We've already seen enough of being killed by machine guns in this video. So, let's go take a look at some close air support and artillery. More or less speaking, this portion of the video is the bacon getting oofed section of the video. And, oh god, it's a bomb. Bye bye. And that is the first time I get killed, and obviously, of course, it is a P-47. We all love P-47s. Next time, yeah, I'm sitting here, I'm nice and happy, trying to get to a nice sniping spot, and oh god, it's a bomb. Bang. I'm dead again, and again, a P-47. Now, I'm on uh, American Desert, and I get shot up, I can't shoot, and oh god, it's a bomb. Bang. It's a P-47. Everyone loves the P-47s, the nicest nicest aircraft you will ever come across and as you can see in this game i got an artillery warning ah oh, that's nah, fine I'm, I'm sure it's nothing i'm not getting a warning anymore oh god i'm getting artied what's going on who is doing this you know i'm just getting hit gun knocked out and bang and it was a teammate i was killed by a teammate good stuff Anyway, I think uh, that all sums up the vehicle fairly well. Uh, generally, I've actually had a lot of fun playing this. It started off a bit iffy. I started off using the skirts up because, as most people would, I thought, hey, skirts up, extra protection for the crew, and it went kind of badly, and I started just thinking, oh, it's just a generic self-propelled gun. It's not very good. Then I put the skirts down, and it was a lot more fun. I really enjoyed that, actually. Um, so, generally... To sum it up, the gun, very effective at this rating. Uh, in a down tier, in an at tier game, it'll be a blast. In up tier games, there are very few things that you won't be able to pen, so it's pretty damn good. And if you can find a good spot to operate from, you can get some very nice games. Be that on a hill, uh, but always try and stay covered, of course, because of close air support. But if you can find a nice position to sit in in a game, you will generally do quite well. Uh, keeping range between you and your enemy can very easily help to minimize the threat of machine guns. Machine guns are very frustrating to face. Uh, every tank has machine guns, so I would say to try and keep some distance between you and your enemy, and that should help. Although, as I said, I've had good fun playing this vehicle, and I certainly look forward to trying out the other event vehicles from Battlefield Engineer. The one I'm really excited to try out, actually, is the JU-388J. Uh, it's probably gonna suck, because it's a heavy fighter. It's a German heavy fighter. Are many of them actually that good? But I am excited to play it, and also the, the upward facing guns, the Shraj Muska guns, look very fun, and I probably butchered that pronunciation, but hey, it's just what I'm good at. Anyway though, thanks a lot for watching the video, if you did enjoy, please consider smashing the like button, maybe even subscribe to the channel if you do, that would be massively appreciated. Thanks again for watching, and I will see you in the next one.